Oh my god! The Capri has hit trouble. Completely snapped in half. Today's episode isn't really one I was wanting to be making. Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, so, yeah, today's episode isn't really one I was wanting to be making. Um, the Capri, unfortunately, has hit trouble. Uh, I guess probably the best thing I can do, first of all, is to just show you uh, a video clip from uh, the other day when I came back from the classics at the cafe meet. Um, so this is where it all started off. I don't know if you guys can hear that noise, but there is definitely some very strange sounds coming from the engine of the car. This is uh, not a good sign. I have no idea what it is. If you can hear that. Oh, well, that is really bad. Whatever it is. Better get this back. All right, pal. This is uh, this is not good. Right. So um, at that moment, what I'd done is I'd actually stopped the car just around the corner from my house to do uh, the, the check as to what that noise was because I wasn't sure if I was dumping fluid on the floor or not. So I haven't established. Uh, when I did the initial check that that wasn't the case and it looked like it was just a loose fan um, What I then did was I drove the car to the end of the drive switched it off got Reggie out buggy out and bags and set etc And then what I did was a, a really big mistake. So what I should have done was just push the car on the drive uh, but What I did instead was I started it again at the moment where it fired into life. There was a really loud bang um, and I noticed at that point that my battery indicator light was on and I'd also lost power steering. Now, my immediate thought at that moment was either I've the belts or more than one belt has come off or I've snapped some. Uh, so at that moment, it was a case of, look, I've got to get this car into the garage pretty quickly. Because of course, with no belts, I've got no, um, yeah, no battery, no power steering, of course, no water pump either. So once it was into the garage, it was at that point that I then switched it off and then had a quick inspection as to what had happened at that moment. So, no surprise, as you can see, the belts have all come off. That's uh, that was to be expected. What's also happened, as you can see, there's the. Uh, pulley that's on the back of the fan so you can see there look it's it's completely dislodged from the engine block now I don't know at the minute until I do my checks whether or not that pulley is held on is is it a sealed unit on the engine or if it's held on by a bolt or what I don't know at the moment um, so I'll need to of course establish that but the other thing that's occurred as well I don't know if this happened at the point where all the belts came off or whether this was happening whilst I was driving home but as you can see the fan itself has suffered some damage um, there's some splits in a lot of the blades and as you can see from those the two at the top there's actually some they've actually broke off completely so this fan is now going to need replacing there's also as well some score marks on the back of the radiator um, I don't know if that's uh, if that's salvageable or not I don't know at the moment hopefully it will be so it can minimize the uh, the cost and spend on this on getting this fixed again so yeah this is uh, not good um, so yeah we'll uh, first thing that we need to do of course is get the uh, get this cover off get the radiator off so we can make some room 
Um, but in order to do that, we're going to need to drain the coolant out of the radiator system. So that's job number one. Right, so we now need to disconnect this hose from the bottom of the radiator and get the fluid out. Here comes the messy bit. Yeah. Right, next will be to get this hose and this hose off of the radiator. Right, so it looks as if what we've got here is an electric fan in addition to the uh, viscous fan on, the, on this side of the radiator and we've got some cables and plugs that connect this up. So. This is going to have to come off the, with the fuse box. Then there's a connection to the positive battery terminal. And then there's this as well, this connection set up here. Now it looks as if with it being attached to the hose, I'm assuming that it's inside there is some sort of thermostatic controller to um, establish the temperature of the water. And then it's either switching the fan on and off here. So um, yeah couple of bits to disconnect now before we then tackle the taking the radiator out. Right, so the next task is to remove the four bolts that hold the radiator to the front of the car. So there's this one this one, this one, and that one at the top. So I think it's just them four. That should hopefully then get the radiator out. I'm just going to leave that one there so that I can then loosen the last one and then it's still supported and not going to fall off. So those top two screws now, I've just got to take the last bits of those out by hand. That's one, that's two. Alright, so this should just now lift out. Right, it looks as if I'm going to have to get uh, these other four bolts off that hold this casing in place because the equivalent bit of this at the bottom is actually stuck under the fan. And I can't, I can't get it out without it fouling on the blades. So I'm going to have to get this off as well. So there's two bolts. That's this side, and then of course two more down there as well. Right, so with those additional um, bolts out, this casing should now just come away. Now the radiator should come out. So with the radiator off, um, it is still connected down here with this other wire, this one at the back. But looking at it, I think it's probably going to be just easier if I just remove this 
red one from this fuse box. Um, I think that's all that's remaining. So I'll take that off there and then get this out of the way so we've got a bit more room to work. Right, so that's the radiator out. Um, it's looking pretty scored. Um, hopefully it's salvageable. Um, but unfortunately this is not the biggest problem I've got. So now that of course we've got access to the fan and the pulley, you can actually see that there are a lot of smashed shards of metal inside here. The biggest one is this uh, shaft that connects the pulley to the block has completely snapped in half. I suspect this was uh, the reason why it was loose in the first place as opposed to anything that I'd done um, when uh, when I started the car up so I think this was inevitable but it's certainly going to become a big job by looks in it looks like we've got a lot of uh, a lot of issues here. I don't know if it's going to be a case of that I need to just buy a new part here um, and whether or not that's got the, the shaft inside or whether or not there's other components inside the block that need to be sorted out. Certainly in unknown territory at the moment um, but these things happen. Uh, I've got to look at it positively. This this at least occurred when I was close to home so that I've got the opportunity to, to work on it from here but yeah, this is a, this is certainly going to be an interesting one. So that about wraps this video up for today, guys. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it thumbs down. Any comments you want to put forward will, of course, be greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel, then just hit the subscribe button at the end of the video. Don't forget to tune in to one of the future episodes where I attempt to try and fix the damage caused on this car. So until next time guys, thanks ever so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Cheers now, take care, bye for now.